towards Bertinia. Off Sobrero. Here's Ali Kemp. Look at that ball floated through. Running on to Lilly. First strike. Lilly will a goal. Looks for the cross. Gets it through. Goalie down. Boston ties it 1-1. That's Christy Mewis. Third. Out towards the middle. Almost 3 2. What a save by LeBron. Rafina plays it off into space herself. Rafina with that speed. Azarike gets it by Hedinger. 2 0 Breakers. Boston is home to some of the world's greatest and most successful sports franchises. And that holds true in the world of women's professional soccer with the Boston Breakers. Oh, absolutely. That We refer to it a lot. The best kept sports secret in town. Now Sanderson fires it to the post. Tapped in and a score. The Breakers play in the fledgling National Women's Soccer League, but have been a franchise since women first started playing pro soccer following the U.S. women's iconic 1999 World Cup victory. That league started was off the back, obviously, the World Cups and the success of those players, so the fan base was automatically drawn in, and it really took off to start with, and then unfortunately, you know, it, 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 uh, within a short period of time, it started to decline to the point where it was heavily losing money. Um, so unfortunately that ended. That first league, the Women's United Soccer League, lasted only three seasons. It was followed by other leagues that also folded. The Boston Breakers franchise, however, endured, playing in each league and dressing a long list of soccer greats. There's been a lot of players. I mean, we have our, our Pillars of Excellence, which is kind of like our Hall of Fame. Uh, Mara Meinhardt, Angela Hughes, Christine Lilly are part of that. Uh, we're just about to retire Leslie Osborne's jersey as well. She'll become a part of that. We've had players from, you know, Kelly Smith from England, Ali Scott from, from England. Uh, those were huge hits as well. Those world-class players, along with the high-profile coaches like former U.S. women's coach Tony DeChico, meant that the Breakers always had a large, loyal fan base when the NWSL formed in 2013. The team's longevity also meant some hard lessons had been learned. The good part of it, the NWSL now has the support of U.S. soccer, which none of the other leagues had. So having that support from U.S. soccer, I mean, the U.S., Mexican, Canadian federations pay some of the salaries of the national team players to be in the league. The salary, there's a salary cap, which there wasn't in previous leagues. Storm the castle, ladies. It's time to storm the castle. The Breakers and every other team in the league are allocated seven players from the U.S., Canadian, and Mexican national federations. Teams are also allowed four slots for international players, with the rosters then filled out with Division I college players and free agents. You know, it's the pinnacle of women's soccer uh, in the U.S. So between the, the allocated U.S. players, international players, and the girls coming out of college, you know, it's one of the strongest leagues in the world. Uh, so with you know, limited to, to nine teams at the moment, uh, you're not going to find a, a weak side. McCaffrey! What a goal! So every game you go and see is a competitive game and there's a plenty of talent on show, whether it be current national team players, current high-level players on the cusp of the national team. Pretty much everywhere you look, there's a lot of talent in this league and every game is incredibly competitive. You know, the, the league is growing. The, the minimum standards are being raised each year. Uh, the quality of the venues, the, the, obviously the quality of the teams. Um, but I, I think, you know, key paramount is that there's an opportunity for these girls to play. Today, the league and the franchise are solid. Now it's all about building a winner, both on the field and off. Basically, we want the players that are here to be the next generation of national team players. And we think we have that group. I think they'll, they'll turn a lot of heads this year. Not many people giving us a chance, but they'll turn a lot of heads this year and this group going forward. We keep them together, it's gonna to be, uh, you know, to be a real strong group, real strong group that's gonna win a championship. Up next on the Celebrity Spotlight Series, we'll take a look at two of the Breakers' key players and go behind the scenes for game day. Stay with us. Looks for the cross. Gets it through, goalie down. Boston ties it 1-1. That's Christy Mewis scoring her first of the season. Playing a pro sport for your hometown team is the lifelong dream of many young athletes. For Hanson, Massachusetts, Christy Mewis, that dream has come true. I am like having a rough morning. 
You know, I've traveled a lot for soccer. I've been to um, a lot of different countries, and I played in Kansas City my first professional year. I was fortunate enough to be traded back here to Boston, and it's the best feeling ever playing for your hometown and being with your friends and having your family come to all the games and stuff like that. So it's something that I've always really dreamed of, and now I'm finally doing it. She was a player that played in what is now the Boston Breakers Academy program when she started there when she was eight years old. And now she's a local girl that's playing professional for her home club on the field. And uh, that's another good story to tell. Christie's soccer story began with the Breakers Junior Squad, then on to the Whitman Hanson High School team, followed by a scholarship to Boston College, where she was recognized as one of the best players in the country. Christie's abilities were further recognized when she was selected to play for the U-17, U-20, and U-23 U.S. national teams, as well as the senior U.S. team, all with tremendous success. And surely the U.S. should, and indeed they do. And it's Christy Muse, the hometown girl. With that kind of track record, it was no shock that pro soccer came calling next. Thankfully, the league came back and we had somewhere to play. But if the league wasn't around, you know, I would have loved to maybe go play overseas. But I, I definitely knew that I wanted to play soccer past college. Like, this is, like, who I am and this is what I want, so. Not surprisingly, Christy has found success at the pro level, first with the NWSL's FC Kansas City, as well as stints in Australia and Japan before coming home to Boston. You know, as a player with national team experience, a young player with national team experience, now she's played abroad for a year. Uh, she's left-footed, she's very good one-on-one, -on -one, and we're just trying to uh, get her to settle in. But I think uh, this is a season where you'll, uh, where you'll see Christy Mewis really come into her own. Despite her impressive soccer resume and world travels, Christy Mewis has not forgotten who she is or where she came from. I think it's important for all little girls to have a role model and, you know, kind of giving back to where you started is very important. So any chance I can, I try to get to a little breakers like game or a little practice or something like that just to like poke my head in and it kind of reminds you where you started and it does make you feel good to kind of be a role model for the girls. Yeah, Kim. While Christy roams the midfield for the Breakers, one of the team's most important defensive stalwarts is veteran Julie King, who was a Breaker before the NWSL even came into existence. Well, I've been a Breaker for, this is my fourth season now, and uh, to see where, it's, where we've come since my first season till now, it's really awesome. I mean, um, the, the staff, the organization keeps saying bigger and better, bigger and better. Uh, and it really is. Being a professional female soccer player is a tough job, not just because of the level of competition, but also because the opportunities to play as a pro are very limited. Julie King, however, never considered doing anything else. I was living at home for a couple months over this past off season. And so we we're going through some stuff from like kindergarten and there was a piece of paper that you know, had like, what do you want to be when you grow up and things like that. And I had said, I want to be a professional soccer player. So that was when I was five years old. Now Sanderson fires it to the post, tapped in and a score. If you speak to Julie, she's calm, she's collected. But then as soon as you start stepping on that field or a soccer brand switches on, she's intense. She wants to win. She wants to be better. She wants to make other people better. And um, the way she goes about that in terms of her leadership skills, people buy into that pretty quickly. If Sam goes there and Shep goes with her and they give her the ball back here and their, their midfield's pushing back, we've got to go up and squeeze up there. You know, she's a coach's dream from the standpoint of coachability and athletically she's off the charts. And she has exceptional leadership qualities. She, I think, is a player for the future of the U.S. national team. And Coach Durking isn't kidding about Julie's athletic abilities. Up the floor, Julie King to the hole, go! When Julie finished up her soccer career at Division I Auburn University, she remarkably got a call to join the basketball team and promptly accepted. King comes up with a steal. Julie drives to the basket. Yes! And a foul! <laughs> but Julie's revived basketball career created a problem when the 2013 Breakers schedule came out. We played through the SEC tournament and then the new league um, was starting, it ended up overlapping, which was a surprise because I thought I would have more time to prepare for professional soccer. And I was all stressed out. We ended up 
the coaching staff at Auburn they understood that this was where my career was and they let me leave early. The breakers understood that I had just come from six months of playing basketball, so my touch wasn't necessarily where it needed to be, but I was in great shape. Obviously, it has all worked out for both Julie and the Breakers. Now it's time to take the next step and win it all. I think we're starting to create a culture here um, as an organization that will last and you know, hopefully uh, pan out to be a championship team. The Boston Breakers are back. New England's only women's professional soccer team has kicked off the 2015 season and tickets are on sale now. Come pregame with the Breakers and enjoy great music, the beer garden, and then watch the best plays in the world and the superstars of tomorrow. Meet the players after the game at Autograph Alley. Home games are played at Soldiers Field Soccer Stadium at Harvard University. Tickets start as low as $15. To get game schedules, more info, and your ticket to Boston's best kept sports secret, log on to bostonbreakerssoccer.com. Good, the guy should watch out for kids. Something so everybody can get together. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of the, uh... It's a beautiful spring afternoon on the campus of Harvard University, and a crowd is gathering for a special event, the Boston Breakers home opener. We don't sell a ticket, we sell an experience. So literally the minute you come in and you park your car, we have active fan zones. Um, for the kids, we have you know, inflatable balls that we can shoot at, target practices. We have some of our sponsors that are there, active handouts, samplings, um, face painting. Um, for the adults, we have the beer garden. Um, we have live DJ there, sometimes we have live bands there. So before you've even entered the stadium, it's already an event. It's already a great day out. Hi, hi, hi. So this is Women's Lodge. Okay. Yeah. This is a medium. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sure, there's a lot of food and fun going on today, but there's also a soccer game to be played. Your Boston Breakers versus the okay, Houston go. Dash. Harvard, it's where we're at. Their emblem, veritas, truth. The truth is, the game of football, the game of soccer is a very honest game. It's a very honest game. It'll only reward you for what you put into it. Uh, so at the end of 90 minutes, we find out our truth today. You know, we have a great field this year. Like, I love that Harvard turf field. That's my favorite field in Boston. So I'm really happy we'll be playing there and they just set up like our new beautiful bleachers. Um, so I think it's going to be a really great atmosphere this year. Good luck to the Breakers. Go out there and play high. And I want to thank everyone for being here today uh, on this beautiful day. Spring is coming, sun is coming, almost so let's play some soccer. And the 2015 home schedule is underway for Boston here at Soldiers Field Stadium. Sai jogando! Tá jogando! Go big, go big, go big! Go big! Today's match will be an important test for head coach Tom Durkin's young squad. He will be counting on veterans like Julie King to lead the way for the Breakers. If one of you stays in the hole, then we have a link long. She can play back to you, and one of you can help to close the holding midfielder down. Rafina plays it off into space herself. Rafina with that speed to Ezerike, gets it by Henninger, two nothing breakers. You know, so now it's punch, counter punch. And that they, now they step up, they're down a goal. And we're like, oh, we scored, you know, there's a long way to go. We gotta, we gotta up to ante. Trouble. Goal. We went up two nothing. The other team is going to pound. Now, now it's truth time. The other team's going to counter punch. The other team's going to raise up their level. Okay? They raised up their level and we backed off. Right? You should go back and you need to counter punch. You need to come out harder. So we moved away from the game plan. We got passive. Get back in this game. Right? Get back in this game in terms of, of rhythm, connectivity. How many more goals do you need to score to win the game? None. You don't need any. But if you do things right, it'll come. Yep. But take them out of the game. They, they, there's blood in the water now. You've got to get, pull yourselves together at the, at the beginning of the game. You'll get one on the counter. Okay, got it? Let's go. 
With Coach Durkin's words ringing in their ears, the Breakers take the field for the second half. Now, more than ever, Julie and her teammates will have to step up, but it won't be easy. Yes! Oh, good job, Chris. McDonald is on side there, try to knock it down to the line. It bounces in. Coleman couldn't get there. Man. You know, it's an eye-opening experience. If you think about uh, the college soccer game, most of the girls that are the, the, the makeup of these rosters have come from top Division I programs where they've been the best of the best. So first and foremost, they're not used to losing too many matches. Guys, we just gotta settle. There's so much space back in this like third here. We gotta settle, we gotta throw tackles. Yeah. You guys, we're not making it physical enough for them. Get it! Get it! Oh. Yes! Some great goaltending and strong defense make the dramatic go-ahead goal stand up. And it's a hard-earned 3-2 victory for the Breakers in this one. Hallelujah. I came way sooner than last year. Yes! It's a great win for the team. But when you go to a Breakers home game, the good times don't end with the final whistle. Hey guys! Hi. We won! Yeah. And then post games, an important part for, for me and real important for the players, that's when we do the what we call autograph alley. It's where the players all literally wait. We've had players out there for two hours after a game signing autographs with the fans and they'll have that interaction and take photos. That's you know, that's that's heartwarming for me to see that one that our players really want to do that and, and to have that connection between a Boston Breakers player and a Boston Breakers fan, I think is something unique. Did you guys have fun? We had a good time. Good. It was a little tight at the end. Yeah. Oh, believe me, I felt it. I know that I and I think my teammates understand that it makes a difference, that little bit of interaction with these young girls. And, you know, maybe they're going to be the next big thing. Maybe they'll be fighting in the World Cup one day or in the Olympics. So, yeah, we, we try our best to reach out with however we can, appearances, camps, just after the game, things like that. Welcome back to the Celebrity Spotlight Series. And now, courtesy of Breakers and U.S. National Team goaltender Alyssa Nayer, we give you goalie cam. Oh, catch it. I'm not gonna it. Yeah. So, I took a step, didn't I? So I keep making sounds wow. on this thing, like a grunt of some kind. It's like a tennis player. You feel like you get that little extra oomph. Back in my younger years. <laughs> While Alyssa and her pro teammates continue to hone their craft day in and day out, the Boston Breakers have also made a huge commitment to local youth soccer. It's called Boston Breakers Academy, and it encompasses camps, clinics, and a whole series of club teams from youth all the way through college. We've spent the last two years really building our camps and our clinics, the Youth Academy program, 
all these other things that create our brand awareness uh, and also able to bring in more money so we can, again, build as a business, grow as a business, and then invest the money back into what the pro team are doing. Along with helping the business, the Breakers Academy also serves as a pipeline of the area's best female soccer players, one that will hopefully continue to deliver local players like Christy Mewis to the Breakers pro team. We're crossing from this side. This person has to get to the front post. Our GM has, has done a phenomenal job in terms of putting together a grassroots initiative and we have a club that's, that's integrated vertically, you know, from the grassroots, from camps and clinics to our, to our club teams, to our academy. For us, it, it helps us to build a brand, but more so it helps us to develop players. Our goal is to develop players within this market that will play in this market on a professional level. Time! <laughs> All right. There is a lot to admire about the Boston Breakers. In an age of professional athletes that is often tarnished by scandal, the women of the Breakers represent what's best in sports, both on and off the field. And there's no other way to look at it for these girls as they are pioneers. They will pave the way and they will say, hey, we were part of this at the beginning and someday we're going to look at this, you know, uh, no different than the NBA where, you know, those, these guys, fly, they fly on private jets now and, and they used to go by bus. But again, it goes back to how compelling it is to want to work with these girls because they'll do anything to keep playing. And you have to admire that in a player. Because a lot of times people ask me, oh, you play professional soccer, like, are the Olympic girls on the team? I'm like, yeah, they're in the league. They're all in the league. Um, so I think that's something that, that people should know. These are, these are the best players in the world playing in this league. And um, it's exciting. You see that, you know, it, it's more sustainable now. So. Uh, as the league grows, each franchise grows along with it, and we know it's got a big, bright future. The way the model's set up now, and being around these female athletes, I mean, it's, I'm the general manager of this, but I really, I'm, I'm a huge fan. Every year it's getting better and better, and I think that, you know, all of us are great role models for the younger girls, and we want females to be playing sports and playing soccer, and hopefully it can just keep growing like it is right now.